Prepare for IELTS, reading skills, identifying writers' views. The thinking habits of successful iconoclasts. Introduction. In this lesson, we will be answering yes-no not given questions as we write a passage about the thinking habits of innovative individuals and the important role they often play in business enterprises. As we discussed previously in IELTS reading task types, the IELTS reading section of the test is true-false not given questions and yes-no not given questions. True-false not given questions are also known as identifying information questions. Yes-no not given questions are described as identifying the writer's views. These two types of questions are very similar, however we will highlight the notable differences here. Identifying information. Identifying information questions require you to identify factual information that you can locate directly in the text. In other words, you need to read the question statements and then locate the relevant information given in the text. The questions may ask you to find specific details like names, dates, numbers, or statistics. These questions are usually straightforward. As long as you understand the question and can find the relevant section in the text, you can answer the question correctly with little or no interpretation needed. Identifying the writer's views. On the other hand, identifying writer's views questions are more complex because they require you to understand the author's perspective, opinions, and attitudes towards a particular topic. The questions may use phrases like according to the author, the author suggests that, or the author implies that to test your understanding of the writer's views. These questions test your ability to infer meanings based on the author's choice of language and tone, identify their stance or point of view, and perhaps even his or her purpose for writing the article. Study tip. As you watch this video, keep a notebook at the ready so as to participate in the exercises presented in this lesson and throughout this reading course. This is part of the Prepare for IELTS course provided by Practical English with Darcy. Download the free lesson guide material by clicking on the link in the description or write to us. Pause the video on the next slide to read the question card for this reading exercise. A neuroscientist reveals how to think differently. In the last decade, a revolution has occurred in the way that scientists think about the brain. We now know that the decisions humans make can be traced to the firing patterns of neurons in specific parts of the brain. These discoveries have led to the field known as neuroeconomics, which studies the brain's secrets to success in an economic environment that demands innovation and being able to do things differently from competitors. A brain that can do this is an iconoclastic one. Briefly, an iconoclast is a person who does something that others say can't be done. This definition implies that iconoclasts are different from other people, but more precisely, it is their brains that are different in three distinct ways, perception, fear response, and social intelligence. Each of these three functions utilizes a different circuit in the brain. Naysayers might suggest that the brain is irrelevant, that thinking in an original, even revolutionary way is more a matter of personality than brain function. But the held of neuroeconomics was born out of the realization that the physical workings of the brain place limitations on the way we make decisions. By understanding these constraints, we begin to understand why some people march to a different drumbeat. The first thing to realize is that the brain suffers from limited resources. It has a fixed energy budget, about the same as a 40 watt light bulb, so it has evolved to work as efficiently as possible. This is where most people are impeded from being an iconoclast. For example, when confronted with information streaming from the eyes, the brain will interpret this information in the quickest way possible. Thus it will draw on both past experience and any other source of information, such as what other people say, to make sense of what it is seeing. This happens all the time. The brain takes shortcuts that work so well we are hardly ever aware of them. We think our perceptions of the world are real, but they are only biological and electrical rumblings. Perception is not simply a product of what your eyes or ears transmit to your brain. More than the physical reality of photons or sound waves, perception is a product of the brain. perception is central to iconoclasm. Iconoclasts see things differently to other people. Their brains do not fall into efficiency pitfalls as much as the average person's brain. Iconoclasts, either because they were born that way or through learning, have found ways to work around the perceptual shortcuts that plague most people. Perception is not something that is hardwired into the brain. It is a learned process, which is both a curse and an opportunity for change. The brain faces the fundamental problem of interpreting physical stimuli from the senses. Everything the brain sees, hears, or touches has multiple interpretations. The one that is ultimately chosen is simply the brain's best theory. In technical terms, these conjectures have their basis in the statistical likelihood of one interpretation over another and are heavily influenced by past experience and, importantly for potential iconoclasts what other people say.
the best way to see things differently to other people is to bombard the brain with things it has never encountered before. Novelty releases the perceptual process from the chains of past experience and forces the brain to make new judgments. Successful iconoclasts have an extraordinary willingness to be exposed to what is fresh and different. Observation of iconoclasts shows that they embrace novelty while most people avoid things that are different. The problem with novelty, however, is that it tends to trigger the brain's fear system. Fear is a major impediment to thinking like an iconoclast and stops the average person in his tracks. There are many types of fear, but the two that inhibit iconoclastic thinking and people generally find difficult to deal with are fear of uncertainty and fear of public ridicule. These may seem like trivial phobias, but fear of public speaking, which everyone must do from time to time, afflicts one-third of the population. This makes it too common to be considered a mental disorder. It is simply a common variant of human nature, one which iconoclasts do not let inhibit their reactions. Finally, to be successful iconoclasts, individuals must sell their ideas to other people. This is where social intelligence comes in. Social intelligence is the ability to understand and manage people in a business setting. In the last decade, there has been an explosion of knowledge about the social brain and how the brain works when groups coordinate decision-making. Neuroscience has revealed which brain circuits are responsible for functions like understanding what other people think, empathy, fairness, and social identity. These brain regions play key roles in whether people convince others of their ideas. Perception is important in social cognition too. The perception of someone's enthusiasm, or reputation, can make or break a deal. Understanding how perception becomes intertwined with social decision-making shows why successful iconoclasts are so rare. Iconoclasts create new opportunities in every area from artistic expression to technology to business. They supply creativity and innovation not easily accomplished by committees. Rules are important to them. Iconoclasts face alienation and failure, but can also be a major asset to any organization. It is crucial for success in any field to understand how the iconoclastic mind works. One. Exposure to different events forces the brain to think differently. Yes, no, or not given. Two, iconoclasts are unusually receptive to new experiences. Three, most people are too shy to try different things. Four, if you think in an iconoclastic way, you can easily overcome fear. Five, when concern about embarrassment matters less, other fears become irrelevant. Six, fear of public speaking is a psychological illness. Comprehension questions, what is an iconoclast? Give several of their qualities as characterized by the author in the text. In what ways can iconoclasts positively contribute to business enterprises according to the author in this text? Further discussion. The author claims, iconoclasts see things differently to other people. Their brains do not fall into efficiency pitfalls as much as the average person's brain. Iconoclasts, either because they were born that way or through learning, have found ways to work around the perceptual shortcuts that plague most people. Perception is not something that is hardwired into the brain. It is a learned process, which is both a curse and an opportunity for change. In your own words, discuss the reasons why you think the author says that having a different perception than others can be a curse and an opportunity. Do you feel that you are an iconoclast or not? Why or why not? Explain your reasons with examples from your life. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please remember to follow this channel. Help us grow to reach more audiences by liking the video and sharing it. If you would like to become a VIP member, or you are interested in having a free consultation, write to us. Or, 
go to www.practicalenglishwithdarcy.blogspot.com for more.